This is a podcast from the Business Times. It's Wednesday, September 25th, 2024. Here are news headlines to track going into your day from the Business Times news desk. Starting with international news, U.S. President Joe Biden addressed world leaders at the United Nations for the final time overnight, declaring that Russia's war in Ukraine has failed and that a diplomatic solution between Israel and Lebanon's Hezbollah was still possible. With four months left in office, Biden stepped up to the green marbled lectern at the UN General Assembly, with wars in Ukraine, the Gaza Strip, and Sudan still raging and likely to outlast his presidency, which ends in January. He sought to calm tensions as the nearly year-long war between Israel and Palestinian militants, Hamas, in the besieged Gaza Strip now threatens to engulf Lebanon, where Israel targeted more than a thousand Hezbollah targets on Monday. Staying with the UN, the UN's nuclear watchdog chief Rafael Grassi said he had sensed a greater willingness by Iranian officials to engage with the agency in a more meaningful way after talks in New York and that he hoped to travel to Tehran in October. Several long-standing issues have dogged relations between Iran and the International Atomic Energy Agency, including Tehran's barring of uranium enrichment experts on the inspection team and its failure for years to explain uranium traces found at undeclared sites. In Asia news, China's financial regulators have announced a broad raft of measures to support a slowing economy aimed at boosting liquidity and lowering borrowing costs for individuals and companies alike. This comes as protracted deflationary pressures weigh on the world's second largest economy and threaten to put the country's growth target of around 5% in 2024 out of reach. The measures include cuts to a key policy interest rate and existing mortgage rates, reductions to banks' cash reserve requirements, lower down payments for second homes, and more liquidity for the stock market. Sri Lanka's new president, Anura Kumara Disanayake, dissolved parliament and called for a parliamentary election in less than two months in an effort to consolidate power after his weekend election victory. A government notification said that parliament was dissolved effective midnight and that the parliamentary election was set for November 14th in an expected move that the new president had vowed to take during his election campaign. Disanayake's party holds only three seats in the 225-member parliament, and the snap election could help him take control of the chamber, while his approval ratings remain intact following his win in Saturday's polling. And in Singapore news, the Attorney General's chambers said it will take a decision in respect of property tycoon Ong Beng Seng Soon in the wake of S. Iswaran's conviction. Mr. Ong is the chairman of Formula One race promoter Singapore GP, the 78-year-old was named in multiple charges as Warren faced. Turning to equities, the Business Times stocks to watch today include Silver Lake Axis, E2I's voluntary unconditional offer to take the enterprise technology company private at 36 cents per share in cash is final and there is no intention to raise the price. For more business news and market updates throughout your day, visit bt.sg. This is a podcast by the Business Times. Find more BT podcasts at businesstimes.com.sg slash podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts.